There's a, a great new book out called Men on Strike by Dr. Helen Smith, Ph.D. I hold it in my hands for those of you watching at Newsmax.com TV to, to check it out. And we welcome in uh, Dr. Helen Smith. Hey, doctor, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much for having me on your show today. No, it's my pleasure. Okay, so, so you say... And boy, we you know I talk about male bashing all the time, and and you know the sitcoms and the TV shows and, right. and all that, and, and I could give you ten zillion examples. But so 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 when you say men are on strike, um, and and people say you know where where are all the good guys, women who want to get married or hooked up or whatever, and and you say they're there, but they're just uh, opting not to participate. Uh, what do you mean? What are they doing in, in, instead of participating? Well, we've heard a lot about, there's lots of books that have been written, uh, like The End of Men or Manning Up or Save the Males, that talk about how men are acting immaturely and they're just, you know, they can get a bunch of sex and they don't care and they don't want to get married. But my point in the book is that men are acting rationally. They're acting maturely because the rewards of men, for men in the fields of marriage or education, careers and fatherhood are a lot less than they used to be and the costs and dangers are a lot higher. So I talked in the book about that men are opting out. Opting out of uh, of getting married, basically, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one of the first chapters in the book. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's a lot of different reasons for that. Um, one of the interesting things is that fewer and fewer men want to get married. Um, and and the average age for men is actually going up in the United States. It's something like a, it's 29 right now, but it's heading up towards 30, um, which is a pretty high average. And Pew Research did a study, and they actually found that Women who were between 25 and 34, one of the most important things in their life is to get married. And for guys, it's actually the opposite. In the last 15 years, men's interest in marriage has dropped from about 35% to 29% who say the same thing. And for those men who are 30 to 50, a, a large number, something like a third of them, don't want to get married at all. Um, and I think because the there are many reasons, but some of them are the legal issues. The risks for men are very high for marriage. Um, men don't tend to get custody of kids as often. They tend to be the ones that pay alimony. Um, we've changed a lot of the rules for women because we thought that the old ways were, were not right. But now we still have in place um, a lot of rules for men. Very and, draconian law, uh, rules for men, absolutely. Yes, and they're getting worse, and, and we have new ones coming out every day to control men's sexuality, and I think that a lot of men are seeing that, and they're just sort of acting out of the game all the time. Oh, well, there's so much I want to talk to you about. Okay, well, and I was going to ask you about uh, something else, but now you say, okay, what what, what rules that are trying to control men's sexuality? You mean, I, I, I mean, you're not talking about little boys, you know, f uh, uh, preventing them from being, quote-unquote, real boys and starting there, but what, what you're talking about sexuality, how, what? Um, well, I'm talking, first of all, there's lots of new these laws in, or rules in colleges that colleges are, they say that if a man is found, used to, it used to be a 90 to 100 percent, you had to find a man guilty of a sexual assault. And now on the college campuses that take federal funds, there was an Obama letter that in 2011 went out and it said, okay, any man that's found guilty of a sexual harassment or sexual abuse or a sexual assault all we have to have is 50% in a feather. In other words, there's these campus administrators. They have what's called the campus tribunal, and they control young men's sexuality by saying, okay, we don't really need a, a large amount of evidence. All we need is we think you did it. And that young man can be thrown out of school. They can have their, their career options limited because who's going to want to hire a guy who's been accused of sexual abuse or harassment? Um, and the other thing is people don't realize it, but in our society, for example, a young boy, and I have uh, an example of this in my book, a young boy who's 14 or 15 who has sex with a 34-year-old woman, if she gets pregnant, that boy is liable for child support. Are you kidding? I'm not. I'm serious, and there's never been a case. Um, Michael Higdon is a professor at the University of Tennessee, and he did a paper on this, and one of the things that the paper said is there's never been a case where a boy at that age has gotten off. If you were 14 or 15 and you have sex with an older woman, even if it's statutory rape, it doesn't matter. You're liable for child support. Now, I, I, I got to interrupt with a question right here. But if it, if it went the other way, exactly. if, there was, I mean, if a, if a guy rapes a girl, uh, there's the, 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 the. There'd be an uproar and the man would be put in jail. Yeah, but the girl, um, so the girl couldn't possibly be held responsible for child. No. I mean, that's insane. But that's the thing is people talk about ir how irresponsible boys are at that age. And then they turn around, they suddenly, they're always so responsible that they know exactly what they're doing, even if they're having sex with a 34-year-old woman and then they're ha she's having his baby. I mean, of course he's responsible, right? Because that 14 or 15-year-old knows exactly what he's doing. Right. I just think it's sort of ironic. When it comes to men, they're immature until you need to slap their, you know, their hand or put them in jail or something.
something, but they they there are a bunch of witless idiots when it comes to like you said TV or anything. Well, uh, and we're talking to Dr. Helen Smith. The book is Men on Strike: Why Men Are Boycotting Marriage, Fatherhood, and the American Dream, and Why It Matters. Um, this is all the result of, of feminism, is it not? Well, I mean, I think to some degree, I don't want to blame it squarely on feminism. I mean, I myself have always kind of considered myself a feminist uh, in the past, but I thought feminism meant equality between the sexes. Right. You're not a ge you're, there's gender feminism mm -hmm. and there's the other kind of feminism. Equity feminism. Yes. And I guess I'm more of the latter, although yes. I don't really consider myself any type of feminist because the feminist movement, it seems like there's just – there has been a lot of power, and I think part of it's political. We have um, one of the interesting things is I found uh, that about 30 percent of women in the United States consider themselves feminists, but when you look at the women who vote, it turns out that about 70 percent of those women consider themselves feminists. So I think a lot of times the laws are driven by, I kind of call it matriarchy by proxy, but <laughs> men are afraid. Of course, if Barack Obama got up and said something negative towards women, he'd have a firestorm on his hands, just like we saw with Larry Summers, the president of, of uh, Harvard, right. got ousted, as you know, um, because he said something that women didn't like. And so men are afraid they could lose their position. They could lose, you know, their job. And, and then that's sort of why I wrote the book is because I want to talk to men about how, you know, how they need to speak out because I think men are afraid to come forward or to say anything because we're so used to thinking of women as the victims in our society and that men can't be discriminated against. Well, how, how do men handle this? How do men speak out, whether it's uh, at a university? I mean, they'll get themselves in trouble. If it's on the job, they'll get themselves in trouble. If it's in a relationship, they'll get themselves in trouble. Uh, and they're taught this. Uh, they're taught to fear it, as you, as you uh, well document. So w w how do they go about it? Well, I think there are different ways, and I talk in the book about, you know, different ways to deal with it. Um, certainly, if you have um, a girlfriend or, a, you know, somebody potentially that you want to marry, I talk about ways in the book to kind of, you know, get to know this person for a longer period of time, sort of get a feeling for how they treat you. I think a lot of men jump into things. They they feel um, if they like a woman or they, they sort of they, they get involved, and I think it's very hard for them to pull themselves back and to really put boundaries on women. And it's hard. Men aren't hardwired to – they're kind of hardwired more to protect women, and it's very hard for them to confront uh, a woman and what she's doing, but I think that's a very necessary part of a relationship is that you have to be forward about what you will and won't tolerate. When you see a woman for the first time do something that's, you know, maybe she makes fun of men or maybe she tells you you're not going out with your friends or maybe she starts to put a lot of boundaries on That women. should be a red flag. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Absolutely. And, and you know, uh, uh, let me just run some of these uh, shows by you. I tell this story to to everyone when we talk about this and uh, uh, you know I, I watch everyone Lo everyone loves Raymond okay mm -hmm. great okay. show yeah. however Raymond is called idiot jerk moron stupid um, over and over and over and over again by his wife and and it's 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 very very disturbing if you look for it and you let it bother you you're gonna find it and it's gonna bother you and this is very t and don't forget that was uh, 15 years ago or more I mean now if you could find a male, an alpha male type of role model or, or male in the house, running the house, in charge of the house, or even as, as a father, if you could make out what sex the characters are these days, um, th 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 it's even worse. Yeah, I think what you're finding is um, Jim McNamara was a, is a communications professor in Australia, and he did this great book called Media and Male Identity, and he talks about that, these issues. He did research, and he found that 69% of the media uh, portrays men in negative light, and he found that only about 9% of the time were men even portrayed normally. The only people who are, tr who are portrayed in a good light are metrosexual type guys who are just sort of neutered type. And, that, and that's what the TV uh, is full of these days in the, in, the, in the new shows that are on, which I don't watch many of, but you see the commercials, you turn by them. It, it, they're, it, they're generic. Well, th not only are they generic, but they've usually got dad doing something really stupid. Like there was a commercial I was making fun of on my blog, and it, it was a Volkswagen commercial where a guy is throwing a ball with his son, and he can't even throw the ball. He throws it under underhanded in this horrible pit. And he's teaching his son the same thing. I saw that exact yeah. same commercial. And it's physically repulsive, and I don't know. A lot of men just say to me, they say, well, that's kind of funny, but one of the things I tell you in the book for men is quit laughing at this junk. I mean, when a man gets beaten in the face by a woman, quit laughing. It's not funny at all. All. And, of course, comedy is funny or slapstick. I mean, who doesn't like that kind of stuff? That's funny. But to turn and to, to 
you know, men are their own worst enemies, and a lot of men make fun of other men. And I talk in the book about two different types of men. One of them is the, the white knight, that kind of – they're usually a more conservative man who sort of thinks that men are the big bad wolf, and we really need to control those horrible men against the poor little ladies of the world. And then there's sort of the Uncle Tim types, and those are more the – Uncle Tim? Uncle Tim is what I call them. Yeah. I think that's sort of a name around, you know, the Internet. But I – Uncle Tim is the guy who sort of sells out his own gender, and he's really considers himself a big feminist. And honestly, I think he's just looking for a bunch of women. You know, he's just looking to placate women and just sort of maybe get laid or whatever he's trying to do. And at the can you time, can we can we say that on the radio? You know, no, I'm I kidding. don't know. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. Go ahead. So, no, 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 okay. no. I guess I guess I guess we said it. So, or, yeah. well, you said it, but I guess it's okay. been said. Well, no, know. no, 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 no. Worry. But 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 let me. So okay. So, uh, but you're right. And here's the thing. I think this should be the standard. And I'm, I'm, I think you'd agree with me. I'll, I'll be interested to hear your answer. If it's not acceptable to be done or said to a woman on TV or in movies or whatever in the public forum, then it should not be acceptable to be said or done to a man. Um, that's how I feel, and I, I think that men think, well, we don't really care. And a lot of men tell me, well, I don't believe in there's there's no problem, and if, if there is bad stuff going on against men, I'll just, I just look the other way. And I think to do that is what I say to men when they say that, I say, you know what, you might not be interested in war, but war is interested in you, and you don't really have a choice about this matter because your reproductive rights are shrinking by the minute. Men don't really have any in this country. Women have the right to choose whether they are a mother or not. Men don't have the right to choose much of anything except whether to, you know, which job to take at McDonald's or down, you know, or wherever to support the, the child for 18 years. And it's it's amazing that. I even, there's even a sense of learned helplessness with men. They're just sort of resigned to it. I've even seen men in my private practice or, you know, over the years in my work where they just, if they end up in jail for, say, child support arrears or uh, a false domestic violence charge, they just sort of say, well, to heck with it. They just sort of go with their well, that, between their feet. That I, I can't fathom at all. I can't <laughs> fathom that. Now, let me ask you one more question. We're okay. talking to uh, Dr. Helen Smith. Her book is Men on Strike. Um, you, how are you? accepted or not accepted in academia and by your friends you know i mean what's what's your life like having these thoughts and, and beliefs um i used to be sort of a big feminist so my family was driven crazy by those thoughts now they just sort of tune me well out. wait a minute how'd you change um i think it went so far the other way i think um as i got older when i was younger it seemed to me that women had some of these problems and then i realized as as i got older that indeed that the society had changed that the problems that women used to have in some sense have turned around and, and there's like a backlash against men also i think because i've seen so many men in my practice i in twenty years ago I had a practice in New York, and one of the first patients I had was a man who was being beaten by his wife, and I couldn't get any help for him. And I realized at that point that, yes, men had a, it was a very serious problem. And from there, I just became more open to it. But as far as myself, I mean, people don't bother me too much. Most people are poor. I think a lot of times people are surprised. Or if I talk to women about the book that I wrote, they'll, they think it's like a cute book that a psychologist wrote. That right, right. Them, How do you rope a man in or whatever? But I think most men get it. I don't even have to say anything, but they totally get it. And you see this look of like this in their eyes, sort of like, oh, yeah, I get that. And you don't really have to say that much to them. And, you know, that's another thing, uh, domestic violence in this country. And people don't understand if you say that men get beaten, too, by their, by their wives or spouses or whatever, or that it's a problem with men on the receiving end, you know, they, they look at you like you're some kind of nut job, but it, all you got to do is look at the Justice Department statistics. Well, it's true, and um, there's actually been some really good research that's come out, even from the National Institutes of Health and other places, that show that about 50% of the time women are instigating vi domestic violence, and that's a, that's a high level. People think, like, oh, men don't really get hurt, you know, but what happens is men just don't really report it, and we don't really think if a man has a black eye. I mean, remember Amy Winehouse? I mean, she had this boyfriend or husband, and you'd always see him in the papers with a black eye that she gave him. We would never accept that. If a woman has a black eye, like we're seeing with this recent case with Nigella Lawson, the, the um, I don't know if you're following that, but the cook, the lady who's a chef on TV, um, there's a bunch of stuff in the papers all about how her husband tried to choke right. her. Right, yes, with the, and they got the picture of uh, his hand on her neck in the restaurant or something. And yeah. they're trying to, I've even heard reports about how they, people want to go after him. They want him arrested, this, that, and the other thing. But they used to show pictures of Amy Winehouse's husband all the time with a big black eye that she'd beaten him and punched him in the eye. And nobody cares because people just don't think that it hurts if it's a guy. But 
it hurts, and, and t women tend to use weapons more often, and that can often hurt or lead to an injury in men. And that's a, that's a statistic. Well, look, uh, uh, you know, I will, we'll, we'll turn to you uh, down the road in the future because uh, uh, th these issues come up uh, frequently, and uh, I always love this perspective because this perspective is my perspective, uh, but it's so hard to find, and when, oh, especially yeah. coming from, from, a, from a woman. And I'm at, the only person I've ever heard. I mean, I wish I could find more. Well, you know, you know Christina Huff Summers. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Helped. She actually blurred my book. Okay, so. well, say I haven't got... I haven't talked to her in years. Please, if you if you uh, get in touch with her, tell her Steve Molesberg said hello. I will tell her. We used to have the War Against Boys, uh, yes. um, uh, the Who Stole Feminism, those great books. Which, I think uh, she's got a new book coming out. In fact, in August, it's an updated version, I believe, of the War Against Boys. All right, you gotta you gotta get her to get in touch with me here at Newsmax, okay? Okay, I'll do it. All right, it. please do that because I'd love to have her on. And uh, thank you for coming on, Helen. Oh, really appreciate. You. It. Good luck with the book. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ah, the book is Men on Strike: Why Men Are Boycotting Marriage fatherhood and the American dream and why it matters.